Our children have watchful eyes, and they see how we treat people and things. They notice when we lash out at customer service or shop too much. So we must practice the behavior we want them to see and learn. Hey there, welcome to Finding Joy with Less podcast. This is Marianne, your host, and I'm so glad you're here. I hope to help you discover joy and a greater appreciation for life. I also want to encourage you, if you have failed to achieve what you thought was your dream, it is okay to start over and build a new life by unlocking your potential with your God-given gifts and talents and use that to your advantage to gain financial freedom. Good morning if you're listening to this in the morning and I hope you're having a great day if you're just listening to this in between your breaks and even if you're maybe you're listening to this towards your bedtime I hope you have a great restful night. If you're new to this podcast I hope you take the time to subscribe and you can also visit my website findingjoywithless.com. So in today's episode we're going to be talking about raising kids. I just want to share with you effective parenting habits to live by. So, as we all know, raising children is no easy job. It requires a lot of understanding, patience, and using the right parenting habits that will help guide a child in the right direction. As parents, we aim to create an environment where our children can feel safe and secure while growing up. Whether you've just started raising kids, have been a parent long enough, or want to be one, this episode will help you adopt certain habits that will help you find joy as your kids grow. Though I can't promise it'll be a stress-free ride, okay? I became a mom at the age of 21, and at that time, I wasn't even sure how to be a good one. Like other new parents, I wondered why parenting didn't come with a manual, Thankfully, with my mom being on my side most of the time, I was inspired to accomplish the big assignment as a parent. I thought to myself that if she raised five kids on her own, independently, I wouldn't have any issues rearing one, right? Wrong. I still had issues, but most of them I could overcome or just learn from and move on. Because that's what we do as normal human beings, right? We take our steps and sometimes fall, but we do our best to get back up and start over. And that's the best advice I can teach my kids as well. That's it. Episode is over. (laughs) Kidding aside, it takes a lot to raise children and how we are raised also affects how we would handle our own. While I didn't have a master's or doctorate degree in psychology, I have almost 17 years of experience being a mom or being a parent. I hope to share the habits that I believe to be effective for parenting. I also gathered some advice from my friends through Facebook. And at the same time, I did research on medically approved sources to back up these tips. Or some might call hacks, habits, and I'll break it up to you in five categories. So according to Dr. Randy Schroeder, the author of Simple Habits for Effective Parenting, there are four R's that we need to remember. And these are relationships, routines, responsibilities, and rules. We'll break each one of them into bite-sized categories today, okay? So the first topic that I want to discuss is how to build a strong foundation as a parent. This is not included in the four R's that I just previously mentioned, but this is something that I believe in. And I want to give you five habits to build a strong foundation in your parenting journey. So the first one is to have a solid faith and relationship with God. I used to think I was a super mom when I was a single mom because I could handle raising a child on my own. But the truth is, God placed people in our lives to support us and lead us in the right direction. I'm not going to mention each one of them who helped me, but I'm sure they all know how grateful I am. The second thing to build a strong foundation is if you have a spouse or a partner, 
learn each other's strengths and weaknesses in parenting so that you both can complement each other. I wrote an article about this one regarding how to improve your relationship with a spouse and it touches a little bit on parenting or division of labor in the household. So you might want to check that out. I'll link that in the show notes as well. The third one in this category is to be a good role model. And this is from kidshealth.org. And it's also a medically approved resource. Now, our children have watchful eyes and they see how we treat people and things. They notice when we lash out at customer service or shop too much. So we must practice the behavior we want them to see and learn. So any values or anything um, manners that we want to see in them, it comes from us. So I know that when they are outside in schools or whatever, they learn a lot of things there as well. So it is very important that we model the positive behavior at home. When I was younger, I would admit that I smoked a lot. And yes, my mother didn't know about this, so don't blame her. I also drank a lot and these habits didn't do me any good. So when my daughter was in the discovery stage and I thought if she saw me smoking at home, she would surely ask me what I was doing and why. Now, if you do these things as well, I'm sure you have your reasons. But for me, I didn't want to have to explain to her why I practiced those bad habits because it wouldn't make sense. That just made it easier for me to quit. The fourth one I want to encourage you with is to teach them with your positive cultural traits. I'm glad that my friend Grace pointed this out. In the Philippines, we show signs of respect to our elders by saying po or opo. We also do not call the elders by their first names. For example, we call our aunts tita and our uncles tito instead of calling them by their first names. Even though we live in Canada now, I still like to teach my kids the best respectful traits that I learned from my home country. So wherever you are from, Please don't feel weird practicing your values, even if you're in a different culture. The fifth one in building a strong foundation as a parent is to please practice self-care. To be good parents, it is essential that we feel good about ourselves and practice self-care. If we're not healthy, it'll be challenging to meet the needs of our children. Self-care can come in many forms. And I have a blog post on my website written by my sister Marjorie Frenette. I highly recommend reading it to remind yourself of its benefits. Lastly, know your limitations as a parent. Again, from kidshealth.org. As parents, it is essential to recognize our limitations. We should know what we cannot do and understand the importance of seeking help. We should also accept that we cannot control everything in our children's lives and learn to trust their judgment as they grow older. Now, the first part in the four R's is relationship. So, we will establish a solid parent-child relationship at home. Here are seven habits you can practice to establish a great relationship with your kids. The first one is reading to them. Reading to our kids is a great way to foster our love of literature and encourage imagination. I may be a little bit biased to this because I'm a book lover, but I want you to know that reading also helps build language and vocabulary skills and allows our children to connect with us and other family members. So take time each day to read stories together. It's a beautiful bonding experience that your children will cherish for years to come. And as for me, I read to Hazel, my toddler, at least 20 minutes a day. I might have read longer to Bianca, but each child has different stages and you can decide how long this activity will take. The second one is to talk to your child. Communication is vital in any relationship, especially to parent-child relationship, and having a conversation can help build trust and understanding. It is essential to talk to your child regularly because taking time to talk to your child about their day and asking them how they are feeling can make all the difference in fostering a positive and healthy relationship. Number three, we need to learn how to listen. As a mom, I know it can be challenging not to give advice or provide solutions right away when our kids say concerns about their friends or the school. But just like us, sometimes we just need someone to hear us, which makes all the difference for them. 
This is something I need to work on as well with my teenager because I tend to always just talk and talk when she's telling me something. She doesn't really need me to fix some things for her. She just needs me to listen most of the time. Number four, quality versus quantity. The quality of time we spend with our children is more important than the amount of time we spend. The best way to ensure you're spending quality time with your children is to be just available. This means being accessible not just physically but also mentally. Try to make sure you're free from distraction so you can listen to what your child says and respond accordingly. For example, when we ask them about their day, make sure that you have the time to focus on them instead of just asking for the sake of asking. Do you know what I mean? Sometimes we do that and I'm guilty of this so much that I had to remind myself in this episode. Number five, we need to take breaks. With the many tasks that we need to complete each day, it can take time to find time for yourself. That's why it's essential to take breaks when you need them. You can schedule regular intervals throughout the day to stay sane and be able to nurture your kids. My husband and I have this mutual agreement on taking breaks from our kids sometimes. And I saw this funny Instagram video before where the mom locked herself in a car. And when the kids ask why, she said, what? I'm having a break. (laughs) If I find it, I'll include that in the show notes. Number six is to show love and affection. My husband and I are affectionate parents. We hug and kiss our kids in the morning, at night, or anytime during the day. When my kids are not in good moods, sometimes it just takes a quick hug from mommy to change the attitude and resume play. Another affectionate way of showing love is when we remain calm when communicating with our children. I admire my sister Ellie for modeling this to my niece Haley. The last one in this category is to appreciate and praise effort. You can encourage your children by appreciating and praising their effort. According to the book, The Danish Way of Parenting, by recognizing their progress instead of focusing solely on the results, you can provide your kids with valuable support to build their confidence and drive them to do better. As parents, we must encourage a growth mindset for our children to understand the power of effort truly. So instead of just saying you're so smart, for example, when your child finishes something, try emphasizing how much effort they put into achieving success. This will teach them that success comes through dedication and hard work rather than talent alone. The second one in the four R's is Routines. Establish routines. My friend Constantine Parisima, a father of two, said, Have a routine until it becomes a habit. For example, since I work from home, I prepare breakfast and sometimes lunch during work breaks, so I have plenty of time to take the kids to the playground after work. And he also says, You can get long naps if you have tired kids. <laughs> I like that. And another friend of mine, my former co-worker Jay, said that part of their nightly bedtime routine is reading aloud. I like that as well. When you practice the seven habits to build a strong relationship with your kids, you will then merge this into your daily routines or monthly routines. They can help you whenever appropriate with house chores. You can have movie nights or sometimes take out kids on a date separately without breaking the bank. Every Valentine's Day, my eldest looks forward to Harry's gift, my husband, because we made a tradition between them to make this day extra special for her. So the third R is responsibilities. Here are some ideas to teach kids about responsibilities. Number one, introduce age-appropriate chores. So for example, for my, my toddler, Hazel, she's two and a half. She likes helping me with taking clothes off from the dryer or I let her put out the the dishes from the dishwasher. That's something that they feel they can be independent on. And the second point is to respect their independence in doing certain tasks. Jackie Louise Allen, a solo parent I know, said she bought an air fryer for her eldest who only likes to eat fried dishes. Now he's then solely responsible for cleaning it up afterwards. Number three, allow them to make choices and teach them to negotiate and compromise. For smaller kids, you can let them choose what to wear or what to play with at the time. 
Number four, please teach them about finances early on. I wrote an article about teaching kids financial literacy that will significantly help on this matter. I will link it in the show notes as well so you can read on. Number five is to make room for mistakes and keep no records of wrong. My friends, this is Bible-based from 1 Corinthians 13.5. And this is an advice for both kids and parents. Another piece of advice from my friend Jay is that as parents, we are not infallible. We also make mistakes and our kids should know that. What's important is that we apologize as soon as we recognize our mistakes. When we make mistakes... We acknowledge it, we apologize for it, and we move on from it positively. Number six, allow them to learn the consequences for their actions. So it'll be like teaching the classic, if you do this, then this will happen. Number seven is to teach them the golden rule of treating others how they want to be treated from Matthew 7, 12. And the last one from the four R's of simple parenting habits is rules. So we establish rules and be flexible when needed. Establishing rules is an effective way to keep order in the household. But being open to change when needed is critical for joyful parenting as well. As parents, we must be firm, consistent, and flexible in certain situations. When you have a good relationship with your child, they will most likely abide by your rules. I agree with my friend Jay, when setting boundaries for children, parents should teach them what behaviors are acceptable and unacceptable. This will help children understand the consequences of their actions, be aware of what's expected of them, and learn how to make responsible decisions. Parents should also ensure their expectations are reasonable and achievable to help their kids succeed without feeling overwhelmed or inadequate. At the same time, I think it's essential not to be too rigid with rules, as some situations may require a more relaxed approach. You can set some limitations when it comes to meal times. So for example, during the meals, they can't have their phones. Make sure that you're also not bringing your phone with you every time you eat, so that the rule applies to you as well. Now, other rules could be like limiting social media use or the use of other electronic devices. My friend Joy Garcia in the Philippines, she lets her kids choose what to eat for supper as long as they eat what's on the table for lunch. Now, I just want to leave you with the key takeaways from this episode and read the line from the book, The Teenage Brain, that says, But the most important advice I want to give you is to stay involved. Our best tool as they enter and move through their adolescent years is our ability to advise and explain and also to be good role models. So, effective habits for joyful parenting can be achieved by having a strong foundation of unconditional love and support from parents, from us. We should strive to make our home the safest and most secure place for our children, regardless of our circumstances. We want them to trust us and know that we as parents will always be there to show them kindness and understanding no matter what. I like to tell my daughter that regardless of the choices that she's made or she's going to make in the future, I'll be here for her no matter what. And that's also what I want to tell Hazel. I know that parenting is an ongoing process and it requires effort, patience, and understanding. It requires lots of tears and lots of laughter. And it's a never-ending responsibility and I'm sure you're going to enjoy it and remain joyful at all times. If you have some specific habits that you do for your children and you want other parents to hear about them or you want other listeners to to know about it, would you please give us a review or a rating? And in your review, can you add those habits? Thank you for listening to this episode. I really appreciate that you included me in your time today. And I hope you always have a great day and God bless you, my friend. Hey, 
Hey, thank you so much for listening. If you like this episode, please take a moment to subscribe to my show and share it with your family and friends on social media. I appreciate that a lot. And you're also welcome to leave a review and or suggestions by rating the show on Apple Podcast, Spotify, or you can leave me a message through my website, findingjoywithless.com slash podcast. I'll link it in the show notes. Thank you.